उमर इब्ने अल खत्ताब 586 टू 644 उमर इब्ने अल खत्ताब वाज द सेकंड एंड प्रोबेबली द ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ द मुस्लिम कैलिफ्स ही वाज अ यंगर कंटेम्पोरेरी ऑफ मोहम्मद एंड लाइक द प्रोफेट वाज बोर्न इन मक्का द ईयर ऑफ हिज बर्थ इज अननोन बट वाज परहैप्स 586 Umar was originally one of the most bitter opponents of Muhammad and his new religion. Rather suddenly, however, Umar became converted to Islam and thereafter was one of its strongest supporters. The parallel with the conversion of Saint Paul to Christianity is striking. Umar became one of the closest advisors of the Prophet Muhammad. and remained so throughout muhammad's life in 632 muhammad died without having named a successor umar promptly supported the candidacy of abu bakr a close associate and father in law of the prophet this avoided a power struggle and enabled abu bakr to be generally recognized as the first caliph that is as the successor of muhammad Abu Bakr was a successful leader but he died after serving as caliph for only 2 years. He had however specially named Umar who was also a father-in-law of the prophet to succeed him. So once again a power struggle was avoided. Umar became caliph in 634 and retained power until 644 when he was assassinated in Medina by a Persian slave. On his deathbed, Umar named a committee of six persons to choose his successor, thereby again averting an armed struggle for power. The committee chose Uthman, the third caliph, who ruled from 644 to 656. It was during the ten years of Umar's caliphate that the most important conquests of Arabs occurred. Not long after Umar's accession, Arab armies invaded Syria and Palestine. which at that time were part of the Byzantine empire at the battle of the yarmouk the arabs won a crushing victory over the byzantine forces damascus fell the same year and jerusalem surrendered 2 years later by 641 the arabs had conquered all of palestine and syria and were advancing into present day turkey in 639 arab armies invaded egypt which had also been under byzantine rule Within 3 years the Arab conquest of Egypt was complete. Arab attacks upon Iraq at that time part of the Sassanid empire of the Persians had commenced even before Umar took office. The key Arab victory at the battle of Qadisia occurred during Umar's reign. By 641 all of Iraq was under Arab control. Nor was that all. Arab armies invaded Persia itself and at the battle of Nehavent they decisively defeated the forces of the last Sassanid emperor By the time Umar died in 644 most of western Iran had been overrun Nor had the Arab armies run out of momentum when Umar died In the east they fairly soon completed the conquest of Persia while in the west they continued their push across North Africa Just as important as the extent of Umar's conquests is their permanence. Iran though its population became converted to Islam eventually regains its independence from Arab rule. But Syria, Iraq and Egypt never did. Those countries became thoroughly Arabized and remain so to this day. Umar of course had to devise policies for the rule of the great empire that his armies had conquered. He decided that the Arabs were to be a privileged military caste in the regions they had conquered and that they should live in garrison cities apart from the natives the subject peoples were to pay tribute to their muslim largely arab conquerors but were otherwise to be left in peace in particular they were not to be forcibly converted to islam from the above it is clear that the arab conquest was more a nationalist war of conquest than a holy war Although the religious aspect was certainly not lacking Umar's achievements are impressive indeed 
After Muhammad himself, he was the principal figure in the spread of Islam. Without his rapid conquest, it is doubtful that Islam would be nearly as widespread today as it actually is. Furthermore, most of the territory conquered during his reign has remained Arab ever since. Obviously, of course, Muhammad, who was the prime mover, should receive the bulk of the credit for those developments. But it would be a grave mistake to ignore Omar's contribution. The conquests he made were not an automatic consequence of the inspiration provided by Muhammad. Some expansion was probably bound to occur, but not to the enormous extent that it did under Umar's brilliant leadership. It may, it may occasion some surprise that Umar, a figure virtually unknown to, in the West, has been ranked higher than such famous men as Charlemagne and Julius Caesar. However, the conquests made by the Arabs under Umar, taking into account both their size and their duration, are substantially more important than those of either Caesar or Charlemagne.